Hi there, Gary here again and in this video I want to talk about the core competencies. I thought it would be easier to show you the slideshow and talk you through that um, on this one so that's what we're going to do. So core competencies, what are they? You've probably heard the term before. They're probably the most important part of um, the marking sheet on the part three and they consist of fault identification, fault analysis and fault correction or remedial action. So I'm going to go through each part in a bit of detail so that hopefully you can understand it a bit better. Fault identification. How to spot faults? Well, you can spot faults in a lot of different ways. Um, make sure first of all that you know how to do something correctly. So you will have passed your part two. Uh, hopefully you'll have kept your driving standards up to part two. But you need to be conscious of how you do something and why you do it and when you do it in order to spot a fault um, in a, a pupil's driving, if they're not actually doing what you would be doing then it's a fault. So compare it against your own driving and make sure you know how to do something correctly. Compare with your own driving like I've just said. Um, pupil observation is very important. It's okay given instructions, your instructions might be perfect and you might tell them exactly what to do um, but unless you're looking at them you don't know whether they're actually doing it or not and you can't trust the pupil to do something just because you've said it so make sure that you're watching the pupil very carefully um, at the right times and I will go into pupil observation in a separate video to explain about how best to uh, observe the pupil. Use your instincts as well so what does that mean? Well if you had your eyes shut and you're a passenger driving along you can actually feel things and you can feel when things don't feel quite right if you just relax and um, close your eyes and think about uh, what it feels like. Does it feel like the gear changes are rough? Does it feel like the braking is very harsh? Acceleration is harsh? Does it feel like when you go around a corner it doesn't feel quite stable or a bit fast? Uh, everything like that you can use your instincts um, to feel and you wouldn't need to particularly look at anything um, because you can tell that something's wrong. So use your instincts, just take your time, relax with it. I think when you tense up it's easy to miss things like that. So just relax as you're um, instructing and try and use your instincts to find faults as well. Also you can find faults by asking questions so particularly on second phase um, you might look at a, the drive and think it looks pretty good but unless you're asking um, questions you wouldn't really know what the pupil's thinking and they might be thinking something, something totally different to what they should be thinking or what you presume they're thinking. So by asking questions you might be able to find faults that way. Fault analysis. So what is fault analysis? Well fault analysis is finding the reason behind the fault, the, the fault, sorry, the cause of it. Um, this could be down to psychomotor skills physical ability. So on a first phase in particular when a pupil's not got very much um, physical ability to drive the car then that could be the cause of the fault. Uh, could also be cognitive or knowledge um, and understanding reasons so if the pupil doesn't know about something or they don't fully understand it then that could cause the fault as well and that's what we call cognitive. Or it could be behavioural, could be attitude, they might know perfectly well um, how to do something and they've been taught why they should do it but the attitude is well I just can't be bothered to do it like that. Um, so attitude is probably one of the, the hardest things to change uh, with the pupil but it is one of the things that you might have to come across. So there could be um, some of the key uh, reasons why the fault was there and when you're analysing um, you need to never assume uh, because it makes an ass out of you and me um, and always find out from the pupil what they're thinking and what they know, what they understand about it and try and change their uh, attitude about something if that's the problem. Poor instruction also causes faults so the analysis of the fault could be it was your fault um, if you don't give the right instructions at the right time and I have covered uh, instructions and positive and proactive instructions in a separate video so look out for that one um, but if you're not using positive and proactive instruction that can quite easily cause faults and so on the marking sheet the examiner would mark that down as faults that were occurring um, but shouldn't have occurred in the first place because your instruction wasn't good enough so you'd see um, fault identification would be uh, quite poor analysis would be poor probably correction would as well and then further down the sheet you've got level of instruction that would be poor and those things all link um, together 
So make sure that your instruction is good and that will prevent the faults rather than causing faults. So fault correction now. Once we've seen a fault, we've analysed it correctly, uh, we know why it's happened, then we need to correct it. So the analysis must be correct. The level of instruction that you use to correct the fault depends on the level of the pupil, but generally speaking, if it's first phase, you would go back to guided instruction and guide them through it, then move on to prompted, and if you can, you could pass it over to them um, as independent, but usually you're going to be using guided and prompted. On a second phase, it might be that you're just using um, a few more questions and the pupil might then be able to manage it on their own, but there are times, if it's a habit in particular, that the pupil is going to need you to go back to guided instruction. So don't be afraid um, of going back to guidance on a second phase. A lot of people think about that being over instruction, um, but it's not if it's relevant and it's necessary. And again, in another video, I'll talk about um, over instruction and uh, hopefully uh, explain that in a bit more detail. Use questions as well to uh, correct faults. This is mainly again on second phase, but you can use questions on first phase. You've got to be careful that you're not um, moving at the same time as you're asking the questions because you'll be losing the control. So do that pulled up at the side of the road. But on a second phase, you can ask questions on the move, and usually the pupil should know um, what they should do and they should know the reasons behind why they should do it. So by asking the questions, um, you're going to find out and also be able to correct the fault um, by asking questions about what they're going to do this time. Um, in comparison to what they did last time. So questions are quite important to, to correct the faults as well. And here we have the motto again, 20 letters, 10 words, one meaning, if it is to be, it is up to me. So practice and prepare to pass.